Hey everybody, Rob Orgel with Silencer Syndicate. In this video, I wanted to do two separate things. The first thing I wanted to do is dissect supersonic versus subsonic bullets and ask a question. Do supersonic bullets perform better than subsonics? Obviously, the answer is going to be yes. The bullet's going to go a lot further and carry a lot more energy. However, the harder question is going to be, what is the applicability of subsonic rounds? Are they going to sound different? Obviously, they're going to be a whole bunch quieter, but will they be effective downrange or at greater range? And how much energy are they truly delivering? How do I intend to show this? Well, I've got this M40-ish looking rifle that I think is just, I don't know, I've got a crush on it. I love the way it looks. Uh, the McMillan chassis really brings it home, but it's not M40 in the sense that the barrel contour is a little bit skinnier than an M40 is supposed to be, and it's shorter, as well as the bolts on the wrong side because this guy likes to shoot left-handed. Other than that, it's very M40-ish. Now, I'll also give this disclaimer. I've had this rifle for a very long time, so its accuracy is kind of on the tail end of, of what, uh, you know, typically 5,000 rounds is what you get out of precision in 308. And we're, we're knocking on the door with this rifle. So it's not going to be the best for accuracy example, but it should still give us half inch, inch style groups. Uh, the subsonics might give us a little bit worse than that. The other thing I wanted to do in this video as well is I have another suppressor on the end of the table here. On the end of the rifle is the PTR Vent 1, and I've decided that is definitely the best sounding suppressor that I have, especially when shooting 308 on a closed bolt. It sounds really good. This off-grid armory suppressor that's next to it, I'm excited to test that next because I think it might sound similar. So we're gonna do all of our testing with the PTR, then we'll switch suppressors to the off-grid armory. We'll see how it sounds, and then we'll go downrange and dissect how much the bullet drops, subsonic versus super. And then we're also going to ring the steel target. I put a steel target at about 50 yards, and I'm thinking at that distance, we should hear a pretty substantial difference of the sound of the round striking the steel. All right, guys, let's get after it. Hey everybody, quick interruption in our video. I just wanted to make a quick shout out to Hop, House of Pain Ammunition. Now they are veteran owned and they're really big into supporting veterans. In fact, they launched their business on the concept of helping guys fresh out of the military find work. So please, as they're supporting us and the weird type ammunition of 300 Blackout, Supersonic, Subsonic, and all the other weird flavors we're playing with, they're doing a great job supporting us. So please, as those veterans support this veteran, let's all support them as well. Back to your video. All right, I've got this rifle zeroed with 110 grain federal ammunition, which is 3,100 feet per second. It is a screaming fast round. For today, we're not using that ammunition. We're using a House of Pain 168 grain ammunition. So we might see a slight deviation of our point of aim and point of impact as I shoot the three supersonic rounds at the chest. Then I'll move to subsonics and aim for the head to give plenty of bullet drop space. All right, shooting at the chest, range is going hot. Slightly low left compared to what I usually have on this gun. We knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Sounds really good. Shot one and shot two went inside of each other. Shot three is just oblong. So this just gave us a really good groove. All right, switching to subsonic ammunition. Going from 168 grain to 190 grain. Now there is a company who's making what they're calling cycling subsonic ammunition, and that's Atomic. And I think they're using like a, so was it, was it a 190 or 210, something real heavy. This is not designed to cycle a subsonic, uh, as subsonic in a gas gun, but for bolt gun, that doesn't matter to us. All right, so before I aimed at the chest, it was slightly low left because it's zeroed for a different bullet. Now I'm gonna aim at the head. This is gonna give us plenty of room for bullet drop because it might fall a little bit lower. All righty, subsonics. really quiet this magazine may not be the best pairing with this gun you can hear the round as it passes through the paper 
This is very quiet. Yeah, we're going to have fun dissecting the performance of this gun when we look downrange of that piece of paper. Before we go downrange, I want to do a supersonic and then a subsonic, and I want to ring that steel so we get an idea of the difference here. So this is a supersonic, and I'm going to hit the steel target. If we recall, the steel target is about 50 yards. Should be quite loud, the impact. We ready? Okay, here we go. With some authority smacking that steel. All right, now the subsonic. Sounds kind of like a nine millimeter hitting that steel. Not a ton of energy. All righty, before we go down range, let's switch out the suppressor. Uh, to me, that sounded really good with the supers and the subs. Like, ears aren't offended at all, even under the tin roof. Let's swap suppressors and see if it's still good. Alrighty, now that we've got the PTR fresh in our mind with what I believe is our best sounding suppressor, we've got the off-grid Armory 308 suppressor on the end of our weapon. We've got two supersonics followed by two subs. I'm going to shoot off the piece of paper so that we don't skew our previous experiment. Alrighty, supersonic. That was a bit loud. That is not PTR quiet. Yeah, I won't do that again. Okay, these are subsonics. Substantial difference. That PTR sounds really good with supers and subs. This guy, it sounds good, but it's not near as good as that PTR is. Last one, subsonic. The PTR sounds like the firing pit. I mean, you, there's not a lot to hear when you're shooting those subs. When you're shooting the supers, it's very non-offensive to my ears. But this off-grid suppressor, it is extremely lightweight. It's much more compact, and it is a low back pressure suppressor, but it's not quite as quiet as that PTR. I had high hopes for this thing, but again, compact, super lightweight, but not quite as quiet as the PTR silencer. All right, let's go down range, take a peek at the uh, paper and see how our supersonics and subsonics performed. All righty, now that we're down range, this is the first three I mentioned before. And you see I aimed right here, but it's a slight deviation because we're not using the ammo I had zeroed with. So slightly low into the left. As I mentioned, the first round penetrated here and the second round was right next to it, almost fully inside of it. And that's proving that there's no cold bore on this weapon or suppressor system. And on the third round, it was slightly low right. So I've measured this, and it looks like it's probably a point, because you measure center, center to center, it's like a 0.35-ish diameter. So very tight group, 0.35. And of course, you can always re-zero that if I was sticking with this ammo. One, it's a testament to hop ammunition that it is incredibly precise ammunition. And as I mentioned earlier, this rifle is kind of on the tail end so that it's still capable of doing 0.35s with a cold bore. I'm pretty happy about that. Now let's look at the uh, subsonics. I aimed here for the subsonics instead of here in order to give myself room for bullet drop, as I mentioned before, because it's quite a drop. Now the value in understanding this is one, if we look at the way the bullets are striking, they're oblong, they're not stabilized. So when we look at long range shooting, as your bullet goes from supersonic and drops below supersonic into subsonic, that's called going transonic. And as you go transonic, your cone of accuracy opens up a lot. Will the bullet still kill? Sure, if you hit the target. And as you see here at 100 yards, our spread, we're looking at 21 inches of spread at 100 yards. So if you're doing subsonic hunting, how effective is the bullet? How much energy does it carry? And can you hit the target where you intend to? Aiming here and having a core group of probably here-ish, if this is our core group, we've got a 14 inch over a foot deviation from where we were aiming to where we impacted versus our 100 yard zero. So this begs a question, is subsonics just fun or is there a very niche and specific purpose? And in my opinion, Closed quarters, super quiet, definitely it's fun.
Does it carry the energy to kill? Sure, if you hit the target as long as it's close, probably it will kill. But let's keep in mind when we're hunting that we might wanna stay with the supersonic ammunition or specialty subsonic ammunition that has expanding rounds and some of those Rex bullets. There's a couple of nifty guys out there that we plan to play with much more. Hallworks provided us with some Rex bullets that we will be testing soon. But if we're not using very spe specialty ammunition and at relatively close range, we might wanna to stick to the supersonics, not just for accuracy, but it's energy transition. All right, guys, if you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing. As well, throw us a comment in the comment section about what type of ammunition you like to use and if this had an effect on your opinion of supersonic versus subsonic ammunition. As always, guys, stay safe, and we'll see you in the comments.